What is up everybody, Dirk here, and today I'm going to be talking about the difference between ported and sealed subwoofer enclosures. These are the two most popular types of enclosures, uh, ported, also known as base reflex or vented, and sealed, also known as acoustic suspension. So, both of them are popular in home and car audio, as you can see here. Uh, we've got two SVS subs for home theatre, and we've got two um, Alpine subs for car audio. Um, now you'll probably notice right now that there doesn't seem to be a lot of difference between the car audio subs, um, but there is a large difference between the two home theatre subs, and we'll go into that. So we'll start with sealed. Sealed's the most simple type of box. Um, imagine what's the most basic way to make pressure. You've got to have, say, imagine an air cylinder. It's sealed, though there's a hole, but it's closed and it's got pressure in it. Um, this is the easiest way to generate pressure. Is just have a closed box, the driver moves in, creates pressure in the box, and creates less pressure at the front. You know, pretty simple, can't really get that wrong. Uh, as you can see here, there is a sealed box, it's quite popular, it's small, it's only about, say, probably a cubic foot, if this is for a 12 inch driver. And, yeah, it's uh, conveniently shaped to fit up against the back seat of a car. And now we'll go into what exactly is going on. So as you can see here, we have the diaphragm represented as the green and the surround. You see that it can move in and it can also move out. So what happens when it moves in? Uh, now we're bringing air into the situation, it compresses the air inside the box and expands or rarefacts or creates negative pressure out the front of the box. And as time passes, this wave travels away. Now you can see that everything's back to normal, except we've still got this negative pressure moving forward as a wave. And now the driver's moving forward. There's less pressure in the side, inside the box, and there is now high pressure at the front. And as you can see here, this is represented as a pressure wave of low pressure and high pressure moving away, which is also a sine wave, which is what you're feeding into the speaker. So. So what exactly is going on with waves? So low frequency waves, um, because they're low frequency, they're also low energy, which means that in order for them to be just as loud, you need a greater amplitude. You need to move more of it to have the same amount of energy, right? So what happens is in order, to, in order for a sealed box to create low frequencies, it needs to push in further and push out further which means it's fighting the air pressure inside the box more which means it's harder for it to do so which means that low frequencies are rolled off so as you can see here because the sub needs to be more uh, to be just as loud it it can't so it's just not as loud with lower frequencies uh, large boxes it's harder to compress the air and expand the air inside the box so uh, larger boxes tend to have not well, not optimal output, but they have a less reduced output. You get a bit more down low with a larger box. And if you make it larger than the VAS of the speaker, or VAS or equivalent air volume, then it becomes an infinite baffle, which means that it no longer has the damping effect. And yeah, that's an, it's pretty well another type of box, even though it also is a sealed box. And yeah, if you imagine, um, or yeah, you can read this if you like, but if you can imagine a sealed box has air inside it which gets squished and it's also hard to push a driver in already and it's got a bit of mass to the driver. It creates a resonance which is why it's got a, a peak at about 50 hertz because that's where it's easiest for the driver to move. So yeah, we'll have a look at at frequency response chart now. So this program's called WinISD. It's useful for designing speaker boxes. As you can see here, here's a sealed box. And yeah, you can see the orange line is 30. So because it acts like a stiffer spring, it's got more of a peak and it's also doesn't work quite as well down low because it's harder to fight the pressure. The yellow line, which is, you can't tell, but it's this 120 liter box right here. It's quite smooth, it still goes low. Um, yeah, this is the optimized box by the software. And it's it's a pretty even box. Now, if you quadruple its volume, you get a bit less up high, but you get a bit more down low. So it requires four times the amount of air 
just to get this extra 2 dB at 20 Hz, which is why it's not really worth making a very large box unless you've got the space, which is why Infinite Baffle isn't really seen in the car audio industry, because if you're making a box that big, you may as well port it, and then you actually get a lot of lows. So yeah, why not port it? So uh, what is a ported sub exactly? Well, how does a port work? Imagine a bottle of water, so about half full, probably not a bottle, maybe a glass bottle of water or something, just so it's got hard glass and not soft plastic. Now if you blow over the top, you'll notice it creates a note, but what actually happens there to create the note? Uh, well, first of all, the Venturi effect happens, which is a fancy word for essentially when you blow over the top, it pulls some air out of the bottle, which creates a partial vacuum in here, just call it a vacuum for what it for all that matters and that wants to suck air back in right so now air wants to be pulled back in and it fills in the space and it comes in right except because it air's got mass right uh one liter of air weighs about a gram which is actually fairly significant when you think about it so air rushes in here and it fills it but then because it's got momentum it's although this air stopped this air's still moving a bit and it actually creates pressure inside the bottle right here. Now what happens is this pressure wants to leave, right? So now you can see that it's rushing back out and it's also got momentum and now there will be a vacuum in it and so basically this is its resonance air coming into and out of the bottle. So if you imagine a larger bottle, it takes a longer time for it to fill and compress the air in it and then a longer time to expand the air in it which means that it's a longer cycle between filling and emptying, which gives it a lower resonance. And if you imagine a longer neck on it, lower resonance, because it takes a longer time for the air to get up, up to momentum. And once it is up to momentum, because there's more air moving, you can compress the air more inside. And so now we'll relate it back to audio. Here we can see the ported box again. Uh, two different types of ported boxes. Uh, you can see that this is an aeroport box for an SPL sub. You can see that that's the bottom of the chunky magnet up there. And, yep, here's another aeroport box, although this one has a much smaller port, and this is probably just for a more standard setup. And here we have a slot port. Uh, slot ports are good because they're easy to make. They're big. Um, usually these are made of poly pipe, and you need that curve in order to get rid of what's known as chuffing. Now, you don't need it, but it's... It's needed for high SPL, for example, this thing here. Uh, this one, the person just be wanting to get rid of any chuffing sound, which can happen when, say, for example, you blow over the top of the bottle, it's got that whistle to it. Also, not just the, the note which it hums at. So, yeah, both these are two popular types of pop boxes. And now we're bringing it back into it. So what happens? Driver moves in. Uh, higher pressure inside the box, except now it's got, got an escape path, except by the time it starts to take it, uh, the driver's moved back to its normal spot, because it's got to get this air up to speed, right? The momentum of the air has to be overcome before it can come out. So now by the time it actually does make it out, the speaker's moving out as well. So what this does is now air's coming out of the port, and air's coming out from the speaker, which means you've got a reinforced sound wave. Um, below the port tuning, uh, what happens is the by the time the air moves out, or yeah, say the air's coming out from behind, it gets out before the speaker has started moving back in again. Which means that since it's moved in, or since it's moved out here, there's more pressure here and there's less pressure, here, and it's actually able to fill in this void before it starts moving back in again which is why below the port tuning, um, it, there's, it's quieter because there's some cancellation going on. Um, but yeah, what happens to its resonance is the driver and the port both fight for air within the boxes and the a certain amount of air. Um, now this is why ported boxes tend to be bigger also, so there's a bit more air in there so they're not fighting as much. Uh, but yeah, you can see here that the driver wants air to push out and so does the port, which but the port wins because it's resonating. Things that resonate um, tend to want to move the most. So since the port's resonating, this driver is just losing the battle. And when it wants to move out, it can only move a tiny bit out. When it wants to move in, it can only move a tiny bit in. 
So um, what happens is, yeah, the driver moves less at the port's resonance. This causes an impedance dip, which you, I'll show you later. But basically what happens is because the driver moves less, it can't generate back EMF as much, which means that more power can go through it, uh, which is good for two things. Uh, it's good for SPL subs because since the driver's not moving much, when you put a crap ton of power into it, it moves the normal amount again, except there is a crap ton of air moving through the port, which gets your high SPL. So now we'll have a look at impedance of a ported box versus a sealed box. Um, you can see here that this one has a 20 hertz tuning and its impedance has a right dip right here because it's hardest for, it, for the driver to move and create back EMF right down here. Uh, up here, it's actually below the port tuning and what happens is the driver, because it doesn't have the pressure on it anymore, because it's below the port tuning, it can move more and up here it's due to phase, but I won't talk about that. And yeah, here's, here's an example of an SPL sub. Uh, you can see that for a box, for a vented, it says specific competition closure, which means make your own, whether it be a wall or a, or a, fart, a fart box or something. And for sealed, it's just straight up not recommended. This sub will tear itself apart, even though it is a carbon fiber cone. And so now we'll move on to win ISD. Uh, this is a good box designing software. You can do ported, sealed, as you saw before, I'll put in different values for a sealed box. And you can see right here that the ideal ported box is twice the volume of the ideal sealed box. And that's what tends to happen. Unless you tune it to a higher frequency, which is not particularly, or well, not very good, depending on what kind of music you listen to. Um, you, uh, sealed well, ported boxes need to be bigger than sealed boxes, okay? So sealed boxes are more compact, you can almost make them any size, but ported boxes really should be the size they are because it gives optimal damping and stuff like that. So yeah, you can see the frequency curve here. Um, this one out of the ported box, you don't get something, or well, you don't get nothing for a bigger box. You get a lot more low end right here. It's tuned to 20 hertz and you really do get down to 20 hertz out of the sub. Um, but what if you don't have the same volume? Well, then tuned at the same frequency, you can see that you still get 5 dB more, which is nothing to tilt your head at. Like, that's actually a fair amount right here that you get just by putting a port in the side of the box. Um, though something is this drive will be over damped and it probably won't sound particularly nice. It might not sound as punchy. It might not sound as smooth. It, it, just, it just won't be nice. Or actually it might sound smoother, but yeah, it won't sound boomy, which if you don't want boomy, or if you do want boomy, then you won't get it. So, yeah, you can see that this is the effect of a same litre sealed and ported box for this particular sub. So, if we move on, uh, you can see now we're tuned at 30 hertz, but it's actually, 30 hertz is right here, it's actually peaking about 45 or 43 hertz. And the reason why is because it's above the port's resonance, right? They're both not fighting, which means they can both work in unison. And because you've got kind of twice the surface area at that point, that's where it's most efficient. A box will be most efficient just above its ports tuning. So, yeah, now we'll move on to the next one. This one's all right. This is probably a good general music listening box, though it's probably overdamped as well. And yeah, here we can see an SPL sub. This one is tuned to 60 hertz, which is a common SPL one, SPL tuning. And you can see that it is 12 dB louder than the sealed box at the same volume. And that's something ported boxes are great at. They're great at SPL. You can get a huge number out of a ported box. Even though it's still 120 litres, like, look at that. And if it is 240 litres, then you can put two drivers in the same thing, and then your 3 dB louder are actually 6 dB louder because you get double the power and also double the surface area. So, yeah, you can imagine that this thing would be extremely loud, but you can also see that the trade-off is you're taking all this potential sound down here and you're putting it up here. You you can't have a box, you can't have a ported box which has a good really low response as well as a good really high response. If you want that, then sixth orders exist, which is I'll go into into a different video. But yeah, once again, 
uh, peaks at 65 hertz because the driver and the board are working in unison it's not just the board by itself at 60 you can kind of pretend that it's working by itself at 60 hertz and yeah now we'll go into the kind of the conclusion uh sealed enclosure advantage is compact foolproof you can't get it wrong as long as it is as it is sealed and the volume is somewhere less than the vast then you're fine and it's got the widest frequency response as i showed right here anything below the port tuning rolls off and is not really usable um but their disadvantages is they're inefficient like look at this peak right here you're getting rid of a potential 12 db by having a sealed box so the inefficient lower sub power handling you can't put a high powered sub in without it tearing itself apart or just not being able to turn it up as much but then you may as well get an sq sub and a less desirable frequency response this one you can make whatever shape you want uh the gray line that is and you're pretty well stuck with the general curve of the yellow one so you need to just do software or dsp tweaks to be able to boost a yellow one and board closure advantages this is basically the opposite of the other ones higher output higher sub power handling tunable to desirable frequency response where you want the peak you can put it you don't just have to settle for 50 60 hertz peak of a of a sealed box and ideal for low efficiency subs if you put a low efficiency sub into a portable box chances are it'll be as loud as the average sealed box so that's something quite interesting and their disadvantage is less compact you can get them wrong you can get their desired wrong um you can over damp a sub under damp it you know it's just either one you don't really want to do and also you have to sacrifice the output below the tuning which is it's just what you've got to do you can get 10 hertz out of a 30 hertz tune box although the subs will be going nuts and things will just not be very happy at all and yeah thoughts on sq so these are this is kind of more um opinionated uh punchy uh sealed boxes tend to well they say they've got more punchy base it's not really true if you tune a portal box high it'll have more punchy base than a sealed box because at 60 hertz say it's much more efficient it can move more air more easily and part of the reason why is because the larger volume and the tune down low it just doesn't create the tight response of a sealed box which is why often if ported boxes that aren't made properly aren't as punchy as sealed boxes are uh, lows um, ultimately no matter how low you tune a ported box there is a sealed box which will go even lower than it even a general sealed box at 0.1 hertz at 1 hertz it'll output more um, but yeah it, it does it is rolled off uh, you can boost uh, a sealed box to be just as loud, although it requires more power down low, naturally. Uh, cleanliness, this kind of goes back towards the punchy. Uh, below the tuning, or below the resonance of a sealed box, um, the driver control, these are both kind of in the same thing. The driver control is considered more as it's kind of resisted like when it wants to push in it's resisted when it wants to pull out it's resisted that it creates a damping effect which can create a smoother sound and is often quite highly regarded in hi-fi audio that it's got a better sound to it um i i don't really care too much i've heard some quite nice ported boxes too in fact i'm pretty sure some features of my six order which is the ultimate ported box uh, do punchy and driver control better than these ones actually um actually maybe not driver control i take that back and transmission lines now what transmission lines are uh they're basically a usually a slot a uh, slot ported box with an incredibly long port now like, check out these things like look <laughs> look at this path here um although it's not that simple see the thing is with a transmission line is the thing that determines its tuning is the length of the path so the longer it is the lower it's tuned just like a port you might say well no it's got no enclosure volume this thing has a volume this thing has a volume this is a slot loaded box i don't care if you call it a transmission line it's not because this transmission line is probably about say two meters in length that'd tune it to what 100 hertz 
<laughs> no, that's it's not a transmission line box. It resonates. The volume inside here will resonate with the board. It'll have an impedance dip and all that. Uh, this here is also just a ported box with the name transmission line. This thing here is a transmission line box. There is no sort of chamber resonance going on here. It's like it's not like a bottle. This entire enclosure is the throat of the bottle, if you imagine like that. Uh, there isn't a ton of difference between them, although this one does act like, well, both of them act like dipoles down low. Um, the transmission line is actually kind of tricky. Like its design is odd, um, and I'm, I like to do thought experiments on this stuff. And yeah, it is kind of weird, um, but yeah. So I'll, I'll probably just move on. But just know that this one's this one would just be a ported box. This one would be a ported box. And this one is a proper transmission line. Something else though with transmission lines is the path can get wider, known as flared, which is where it gradually gets wider and wider, or it can get narrower, which is known as tapered. This one's just a constant length. And yeah, here's a quick rant also, not just about that, but about the rest of the audio industry. Um, the reason why I'm making this video is because I saw one by another company, um, Audio Experts. No, it's... It's not as simple. I mean, I did show a, th a 12 dB boost, but in that video they claim a 13 dB boost out of the ported box. It's just not that simple. Not every frequency is 13 dB louder, as I show down low. You don't get the same kind of response as up high, you know, whatever peak you choose. It'll pretty well only work at that peak. Um, things that are happening in that were things like corner loading because the uh, the porter box was lowered down in the corner. It was being corner loaded, which adds 6 dB. Um, in a room, this stuff you don't really talk about in car audio because cars don't have corners. They've got fronts and backs and, you know, and everything's curved inside. And also that sub, you could hear that when it wasn't at its tuning, it was louder again. And that's because chances are... They were, it was maybe a dual 4 inch sub in the ported box and a 4 inch, sorry, it's a dual 4 ohm sub in the ported box and a 4 ohm sub in the sealed box and wired it too because you could hear it was louder immediately. And that's not just because of the port. Um, there's a lot of misinformation in audio and just know that it's not as simple as one is louder than the other, one is better than the other. All have their own use cases. Um, sealed boxes can actually be very good for audio in, say, particularly small cars, um, where there's that roll-off, there's a thing called cabin gain, which boosts low frequencies, and can actually make them sound reasonably flat, and, but border boxes are there just to guarantee that the output is flat, or even boost low frequencies if you're into that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe if you're interested because I'm going to make a couple more videos. I've already got a sealed versus infinite baffle video uh, just about ready to go out. And yeah, uh, it took me ages to make this video. So if you hit the like button, that'd be appreciated or any other feedback. If you've watched this part, let me know in the comments. I want to know if people actually put up with this kind of boredom. And yeah, hopefully you learned something. Anyway, see ya.